Hello everyone and welcome to another Revit tutorial and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to detail an Apex Honch connection. So let's get started. So in order to detail our Apex Honch connection we need to left click on this Apex Honch and click on edit type. Then we need to click on modify parameters and click on the edit button here. And in this video I'll be mainly talking on the general section here and I'll go through each and every one of the tabs that you can see in the general section. So I'll just quickly click on the front option here so you can see the front view of our connection. And right now the first option is to change the thickness of our plate. And in this case right now we are set at 0 0.01 meters which is just uh, one centimeter. So if I want to go and exaggerate this to say five centimeters so you can see is the place where you can change the thickness of your end plate. So I'll just quickly change it back to 0 0.01 meters because that's approximately the thickness of my roof beams uh, flange. So construction gap here is currently set to 0 meters which means that there's no gap between the two end plates. So if I change this to say 1 me uh, centimeter, you can see there's a gap here. But in this case, I'll just keep it at 0 because I want the end plates touching each other. Moving on to the correction angle, right now it's set to 0 degrees. If I were to change it to say 2 degrees, what this does is that it will separate the bottom uh, of the end plates over here by 2 degrees. If I set it to minus 2 degrees, it will be messed up. So the haunch on the right, or should I say the end plate on the right will move to the left, and the end plate on the left will move to the right. So in this case, I want the end plates touching each other, so I'll just keep it at 0 degrees. And end plates and two angles here, and there's nothing much that will happen if you unclick them. There's nothing much if you unclick end plates and two angles here. So just keep it on. And for the end plate length type, there are quite a few options. There's projection, there's from top, from bottom, and by bolts, and I'll explain each one. So from projection means that the length of your end plate will follow the dimension from the top of your apex here to the bottom of your haunch. If you choose from top, it means that you'll be drawing from top down. So if I change the length to 1 meter, so you can see that it's drawing from top down. If I change it from from top to from bottom, the effect will be the opposite, so it'll be drawing from the bottom up. And if I choose the last option, which is by bolts, basically the length of your end plate will be starting from your first bolt, or should I say the middle of your first bolt, to the middle of your last bolt. So the by bolts length type will be the least useful. So I'll be just using the projection. And projection top and projection bottom means that you can extend your end plate uh, to the top or at the top. And you can also extend your end plate downwards as well. So in this case, I want to extend the end plate downwards so that I can have a flat bottom haunch over here. So I'll try key in a value, say 0 0.1 meters. So it looks about right. And end plate width type, there are quite a few options as well as projection. And there's exact values and by bolt. So projection means that your end plate width type will be based on the width of your roof beam. If you choose exact value, you can specify any value other than the thickness of your roof beam. And by bolts again, so basically by bolts option will be uh, measuring from the middle of this bolt to the middle of the other bolt over here. Not very useful, so I'll just use projection. So projection left and right will help increase your end plate width in the left or the right. So if I extend it to the left by 0.2 meters, you can see that it's extended to the left already. And if I were to do the same in projection right, so extend by 20 centimeters to the right. So in this case, I just want the width to be uh, exactly the same as the roof beam. So I just keep all of these at zero. And moving on to the haunch connection, so go to haunch 1, 
and immediately you'll see there's a drop down here which says this side or other side so if I click on other side here you'll see that the horn should be at the top which is not which is not what we want we want our haunch to be at the bottom over here if you click on none basically there will be no haunch as you can see so basically the assumption for profile is that Revit will assume that you're using a section that's exactly the same size as your roof beam and you're going to cut it up and construct a haunch with it and the plates option here it is assumed that you're going to create a haunch based on uh, individual steel plates so you can see that the width of the uh, the option will be a lot uh, narrower than the width of your roof beams. So in this case, I prefer to use the profile option. And for the length of your haunch, there are three different options here. You can either measure it from the inner end plate here to the end of your haunch, or you can measure from the start of your haunch to the end of your haunch in a diagonal manner as shown here or you can or you could measure the length from the middle of your connection here to the end of your haunch so I prefer to normally use this first option here and if I were to go and change this number to say 0 0.5 you can see that the haunch gets longer and one thing to note is that the stiffness, sorry, uh, one thing to note is that your stiffener plate will also uh, move depending on your length here. So if I change it back to 0 0.45 again, you can see that the stiffener plate uh, placement will be adjusted according to how uh, far this haunch goes down the roof beam. So I'll just use 0 0.5 for this example. And for height of your haunch, there are many options here, so I'll go through each one. So if you use this option, basically you're measuring the height of your haunch based on the top of your apex. So it's measured from this point here at the top to the bottom of your haunch. So of course 0 0.16 meters will be too short. You probably need something like 0 0.6 meters, for example, just for the haunch to be visible. And if you want to move to the next option here, height from rafter axis. So basically it means that your haunch will be measured from the middle of your roof beam to the bottom of your haunch. And in this option here, height from rafter bottom. So you will measure from the bottom of your roof beam here down to the bottom of your haunch. And in this option, in, in this option here, uh, height from web depth. So basically, it's going to be a slanted uh, dimension based on this point here to this point here. And single cut haunch will just create a simple flat haunch here. In this example, I'll be using height from rafter bottoms. Okay, so for this video, I'll be using a height of 0 0.32 meters here so that it'll be flat. And I will not be using any chamfers, and chamfers refer to the cuts at the edges here. And if I set this to zero immediately, so basically the edges uh, over here and over here will be uh, no longer cut if I set chamfer 1 to zero. If I set chamfer 2 to zero, basically there will be no chamfer here. And I can just readjust this height again so that it will be, uh, be as flat as possible. Okay, so this looks about right. And I'll quickly go back to the end plate so that I don't need to go and extend by too much over here. So I'll try zero and there you go. It's perfectly flat and the end plate follows all the way until the bottom of your haunch. And please do select the same section as rafter so that uh, your haunch member here will be based on the same size as your roof beam. As, as you can see, the width of your haunch is exactly the same as the width of your roof beam if you select this option. If you don't, you can go and select other options over here.
but in this case I'll be using same section as rafter and if you take same for both sides basically the same uh, settings will apply for haunch 2 and haunch 2 will be all grayed out so now moving on to the bolts so right now we can see that we are using the American standards here since everything is measured in inches and in this video I'll be using the British standard so I'll be going to the all section here and finding the EN section so I have made a video on British standard bolts and you can watch that in the description below so in this video I'll be using the EN 14399-3 which is a which is a uh, preloaded hexagon bolt and I'll be using a 20 millimeter diameter and a bolt grade of 8.8 .8 because it's more common and if you see here there are two tick boxes here if we choose distance from previous bolt as an untick option basically you'll have a more closely spaced uh, set of bolts in the vertical direction here so I'll just keep it as tick and invert basically means that you'll just switch sides from where the bolt head will be so right now the bolt head will be on the right and the washer will be on the left so if I click invert it'll be the opposite uh, yeah it'll be the other way around but in this case I don't need to go and invert it so I'll just keep it as is and for horizontal distance it basically means the distance from this one bolt here to this bolt here so I set it to one meter uh, just for exaggeration purposes so you can see what I mean so basically horizontal distance refers to the distance from this bolt to this bolt here or from this vertical bolt group to this vertical bolt group so right now I'll just keep this uh, horizontal distance to 0 0.08 and number per side will uh, will affect the number of bolts there are in one side so if I put this as 2 so you'll see that there are two bolts in this side or two vertical bolt groups in this side I mean and there are two vertical bolt groups in this side so in this case I only need one so I'll just key in one and one thing to note, if you did key in two or more, you can space out this second set of bolts accordingly. So you can set it to say 0 0.0, uh, you can set it to say 0 0.1. And there you go. So you can space out these additional vertical uh, bolt groups apart by using this setting here. But in this case, I'll be just using one only. So this will be grayed out. Next, moving on to the bolt group. So I'll be having two separate bolt groups, one for this uh, section here, one for this section. So I'll have three in this group one, and I'll have two. And then I'll briefly explain my this decision on these uh, dimensions here. So basically, for your start distance, the minimum spacing would be 1.2 times your bolt diameter. So that would be about 0 0.024 meters. And the maximum spacing for this start distance is 40 plus 40 millimeters, T being the thickness of your plate. So I've calculated that as 0 0.08 meters. So I'll be using that value here. So I'll be using the value of 0 0.08 meters for your start distance here so that there's more clearance from the top to this bolt so that it'll be easier to go and fasten. And for the intermediate distance, the minimum spacing will be 2.2 times your bolt diameter, which is 0 0.044 meters, and the maximum will be 14 times T, your end plate thickness. So the maximum will be 14 centimeters, and your minimum will be about 4.4 centimeters, so I'll just keep it at 10 centimeters here. For group 2, I'll be using a larger start distance because you can see that uh, this bolt here is too close to the top and you won't be able to tighten them uh, properly like this. So I'll use 0 0.15 and keep the intermediate distance constant. And for stiffener, basically it refers to these two plates here that are welded. 
you can change their thickness or their slope. So if you take this box here, you can basically make this plate uh, vertical. But in this case, I'll just keep it as is. And for justification, I have not really seen much changes here other than going uh, further down. So I can just keep it as standard and it'll be fine. And corner size refers to this part over here. So basically, if I change the corner size to zero, basically there'll be a nice curve that follows the curve inner profile of your beam. And for the welds, I'll just use fillet welds throughout. So that's it for this video on detailing a apex hunch connection in Revit. I do hope that you like this video and that you learned something new. And as always, if you want to watch more videos on Revit or Plexus 2D, do consider subscribing to my channel. It's free. And I do hope that uh, you're safe in these times. And as always, keep learning. Goodbye.